that I'm being a good scientist about this. I know of a study that um, says that um, they've exposed bacteria to uh, different environments as catalysts for change, and um, the bacteria were able to uh, mutate uh, up to six times, and they ran out of steam after six times. And so I'm saying uh, I would interpret that as a limitation to the adaptability. And by the way, none of the bacteria turned into anything else. They, in fact, every time uh, a change was provoked, uh, they um, lost some robustness up in, and, and up until six times where they, they simply ran out of steam. So I'm using those pieces of evidence, and I'm saying these are predictions, and there's nothing wrong with me um, drawing that conclusion. I think it's a reasonable and logical thing to do. Okay, first off, I'd like to see this study, because there's nothing that I can recall stating that organisms can only mutate six times and then die. Secondly, they lose robustness with each mutation? Perhaps in that one unnamed experiment, but I have to wonder why you're ignoring the hundreds of thousands of experiments which record beneficial mutations in bacteria that result in an increase in fitness. Why do you ignore these? Lastly, I love how you mentioned at the end that they're still bacteria. I mean, what, what, what exactly would you expect them to turn into this? abiogenesis and the problems there and we can um, do the same thing we can take the prediction and the prediction is that the elements contain whatever is necessary um, to um, provide for the emergence of life from an organic uh, element and so we could take the list of elements that are in the uh, human body and um, oxygen, nitrogen, and so forth, take them in the correct proportions, mix them up. In fact, this would be a good experiment to do in your chemistry class. Um, if you're a chemistry teacher, you could do this with your students. Uh, the ingredients are very easy to obtain, um, the list of ingredients in the human body. Um, oxygen and nitrogen and so forth and you put them in the right proportions and mix them up in your tub um, and um, we should see the emergence of a human body now if that doesn't happen then I think we could say well here's evidence that um, the uh, per potential uh, for these elements to spontaneously um, arrange in such a way that um, a human body is formed. Uh, either it's going to happen or it's not going to happen. If it doesn't happen, then I feel that I'd be justified in saying, well, the, apparently the potential for these elements to cause the emergence of uh, the human body um, is not there. There has to be some something else. It would be. All right, man. Look, I came out to do a respectful video in response to you, but this is just plain pathetic. You honestly believe that abiogenesis postulates that atoms were just floating around and in a few days turned into a human being? If that's what you believe abiogenesis has happened, then you have no business even discussing it, let alone making a video debunking it. You clearly know nothing about abiogenesis. Now, on the other hand, if you're not that ignorant and you don't think that that's what abiogenesis happened, then what in whatever warped world you live in would atoms not spontaneously assembling into a human body disprove abiogenesis? You see, so you either A, don't know what you're talking about, yet feel happy to talk anyways, or B, are just plain being dishonest. I know. Now, now, let's test whether or not the Civil War really happened by mixing some Northerners and Southerners together in a room, and if we come back and they're not in the middle of Gettysburg, then we'll know the Civil War never happened. That's literally how ridiculous your, um, the experiment you're suggesting is. Uh, either way, th this part of your video is just damn shameful. You need to educate yourself about what your opposition says before opposing it, let alone debating it. In fact, here's an idea. Instead of asking yourself, what's the best way to disprove abiogenesis, perhaps you should be asking, is abiogenesis a valid idea? 
If you were to do that, you might actually learn something about it. Avoid making video train wrecks and embarrassing yourself like you've done here in this last section. Again, I came here to be respectful and rebut these claims because you clearly had questions and I wanted to answer them for you, but at the same time I have very little tolerance for somebody who says, no, 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 you're all wrong, I'm right, and you know nothing about the subject. That's simply unacceptable. Lastly, if you want to actually learn more about abiogenesis, I did a video on it for one. Second of all, there's an excellent piece over at Talk Origins dispelling a lot of creationist myths and describing exactly how abiogenesis could have happened. I don't believe that you, if you are a semi-reasonable man, could read this piece, which you can find by googling lies, damn lies, and abiogenesis. Um, it's a Talk Origins result, it should be the first one. I don't believe that you being a reasonable man, if you are a reasonable man, could read that piece and still come to the conclusions that you've, you've rendered in your video.